You guys may remember this 361 from earlier in the year. About almost 15 years ago, I lent this to a friend of mine uh, for his car. And he had it in there, and then it was neglected, and it was left with water in it, and it cracked. So back then when we picked it up, I said that I was going to do a repair on this, that I was going to do an ancient cracked casting repair technique. But I decided against it. And what I was going to do is I was going to pin it. And pinning is when you take the crack and you drill holes in it, you thread a, a bolt into the thing, you grind it flush, and then you drill a hole overlapping that and the casting. And you keep doing this until you stitch it together. And that's what I, was, I originally intended to do with this. But when I looked at it from the inside with the, with the core plugs out, I could see that this area right here is like thick. This is thin. And what was going to happen is I was going to have to drill halfway through thick and halfway through thin. And, you know, I just didn't like the idea. So I said, let me give this thing a shot welding it with Fluxy, Fluxy 2. So this is my $120 Harbor Freight flux core welder, which we've already built two cars with. And I said, let me give this a shot. Let me see if the flux core is going to work on this casting. So now, in the past, I have attempted to weld cracks like this, freeze cracks like this, using oxyacetylene. Bad results. It cracks just as it starts to cool. Um, and I tried doing it with a stick welder, and I had the same problem. I finished the crack, or I finished welding it, and then it cracked as it was cooling. So I said, you know what? Let's try something a little bit different. I know that flux core burns a little bit hotter than regular MIG. Let's see what happens if I just do short sections at a time and let it cool completely and then do another little short section over time. And let's see where we go with this. So what I got here is I V'd out the crack. I put a fresh core plug in here. So this way, this, this hole would be held, you know, stable. The crack ends here. And I didn't drill a hole completely to the end of the crack. What I did was I took the die grinder and I just dug in as far as I felt I could go and still leave a little bit of metal behind it. So here's a radius that I created to end the crack. And here's the other radius that the crack ends at. So this is what I've been doing. I've been going approximately half to three quarters of an inch at a time. So here was the first shot. Here's the second one. The third one was in here. Here's the fourth one here now. And this is, it's cold to the touch. I just laid this about five minutes ago. And I'm going to let this relax for a few minutes. And then I'm going to go some more. So, it's an experiment. And it may work and it may not work. But the, my intended purpose for this engine, the intended use of this engine, doesn't really require that it goes out and does anything long term. We're going to use this as a mule. So, let's talk about that before we get any further into this. We do a lot of theory and, and practice types of videos here. But a lot of things remain like undemonstrated. And what I'd like to do is create a, a car an engine combination where we can try anything and everything and do ABA testing. So we're building a mule. And this is going to be at least one, if not the primary engines for the mule. And what it is, is it's a 361 Chrysler. It's a 1962 361 Chrysler. Uh, stock compression on this thing is about 9 to 1. And it's going back together again with stock pistons and stock cylinder heads and everything else. The reason I'm using the 361 out of all of the possible engines, aside from the fact that I have it, and it's like, might as well use it, it's the perfect mule engine. Its size is right there where just about everybody's, I mean, the, the average streetcar, the average hot rod, has got a 350 Chevy in it, or an engine of around 350 cubic inches. So a 351 Ford, a 350 Chevy, a 360 Mopar, a small block, they're all in that range of about 350, 360 cubic inches. And remember, we're talking about average car that the average guy is going to build and, and just screw around with is his hot rod. Not a race car, not a, you know, nothing exotic, not a muscle car, just a basic bolt together, um, bolt on part hot rod engine. 
And the reason why I'm using the 361 Chrysler as opposed to a 360, which would make sense because, well, 360, you know, Mopar, is because the 361, while it's an obscure engine, it's part of that big block family. So the intake manifolds, the beauty of these things is that the intake manifolds can be swapped on and off of them without ever changing the intake manifold gasket. They use a stamped steel gasket, like a steel shim gasket, and they don't leak. There's no water passages through them. So you can literally just unbolt one manifold, bolt another one on, and not have any con special considerations or leaks to worry about or anything like that. Boom, on and off, real quick. The distributor's at the front, so if you want to do any type of ignition ABA testing, it's simple, it's right there. It's, these engines are amazingly easy to work with, very serviceable. And their architecture is nearly identical to a small block Chevy. The cylinder heads are nearly identical to a small block Chevy. And I, as, I've, as I've said before, the big block Chrysler is really nothing more than a small block Chevy on a Ford Y block. When you, when you combine those two things, you end up with the big block. So that's what we're doing here. Now, is this weld going to go all the way without cracking as it cools? Now, I, I hope so. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to lay another bead here, and then we're going to pin it a little bit with the hammer to try to relieve whatever stresses might be in there. But so far, so good. Because I, I looked in here along the actual crack, and I don't see it getting any wider or buckling or doing anything like that as I'm closing up this bead. So let's lay a little bit more here and see where we're at. Looks good so far. I, I went a little bit further on this one than I had intended, but it's okay. It's still, it's still not really hot to the touch. So let's let that cool for a while, and we'll finish it up and see if it's see if it's going to hold. If it doesn't crack during the welding process, it'll hold. There's no question about that. So this last three quarters of an inch, that'll tell the tail whether it's gonna make it or not. All right, so this last, this last leg here, I'm gonna come from this direction where I dug my, dug my divot and filled this way. So this is the moment of truth.
Well, that looks like a success. That looks good. So this is this is a shallow area here, which I'm going to wait until this completely cools off, and I'm just going to go back. I, I know that there's weld in there, but it's it's just not uniform. So I'm going to go back and just fill that in afterwards. But this looks really good. It didn't crack. It didn't spread. It didn't go past here. The last time I did this, I tried this. It just as it was cooling, it just went like that. And this one is looking really good. So, I'm going to say it's definitely worth the shot. Um, I'm really happy with that. I'm really happy with that. Now, I don't know if the results would be the same with just a standard MIG. I, I, I'm not a welder. I, I'm a guy that can weld sometimes, but I'm not a welder. Um, so, I can't tell you for certain what's going to work, what's not going to work. I can only show you what we just did here and the tool that we used to do it. And here's the result. And it's, uh, it's, it's cool. I mean, when I tell you, when I tell you it's, it's cool, I mean, I, it's barely more than just room temperature. Because, you know, that's the thing about cast iron. It's a heat sink. So you put heat here and it, and it has to get spread out. That's one of, the, one of the reasons that makes it difficult to weld because if you do get too much heat concentrated in one area, this area here is cold, this area is here is hot, and as they try to equalize, that's when it cracks. So if you're going to try this at home, do what I did, short sections, go short sections, you know, V it out, make sure that it ends at a radius. And then just do short sections and let it cool completely. And uh, I'm happy with that. That's beautiful. That's fixed. All right, guys. I hope you got something out of that. I'll see you tomorrow.